In the 1930s, America was struck by an ecological disaster the likes of which it had never faced before. This disaster was the Dust Bowl. During its time, America would see large dust storms rise up in the arid Midwestern Great Plains that would travel across the nation, coating large swaths of land and fine dirt before stopping near the end of the decade. However, today for reasons both similar and different to the past, it seems that the Dust Bowl may be returning. So what is happening? Why is a new Dust Bowl forming? And how will it affect America and the world going forward? Hello audience, Mr. Z here with a geopolitics video for you. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We have videos every week, so subscribe and stay tuned. Before discussing the potential for a new Dust Bowl to emerge, it's important to look at the history of the Great Plains to understand how this region came to be. The Great Plains prior to the Civil War were a large, sparse landscape with little settlement aside from a few small towns built along the old trails that American settlers traveled out west on, such as the Oregon Trail along with its lesser-known cousin, the Santa Fe Trail. Economically speaking, much of the land was used for hunting and fur trapping with little agriculture aside from livestock which provided modest incomes for those who lived out in what was considered the frontier. Following the Civil War, the region would see significant change as the introduction of the rail made the region far more accessible to new American settlers seeking to move out west. This would only further be spurred by the various homestead acts which were passed immediately following the Civil War as many Americans sought a new life away from the conflicted lands of the east. New legislation and the efficiency of the rail network encouraged the practice of agriculture as government grants now made the practice feasible. In addition to this, the region also experienced significant rainfall during the 19th century, leading many to mistakenly believe that the climate had changed permanently to be wetter. Many held to this belief even as the region faced drought in 1886, leading farmers to begin overgrazing their land and increasing the amount they cultivated. During this time, the Great Plains would see waves of German immigrants move into its northern reaches as the soil became increasingly under strain. This would reach a fever pitch come 1917 when the world saw its agriculture value increase rapidly with the outbreak of World War I and the later Russian Revolution. However, soon after, the grain prices returned to normal, causing a short recession in the late 1910s. Regardless of the recession, many were still optimistic about the future of the region. That would be until 1933 when the first signs of the Dust Bowl appeared. On November 11th of 1933 in the state of South Dakota, an unusually strong gust blew through the state. It would be there that the soil, overused and deprived of its nutrients, would become detached from the ground as it picked up into a massive dust cloud, becoming the first ever black blizzard. This one in particular would soon spread from South Dakota to Chicago, Toledo, Cleveland, Boston, New York, and even the nation's capital of Washington, D.C. During this time, the region became stricken with drought, causing the fine soil of the region to be easily moved along by the winds, ruining crops and making the planting of new crops more difficult. By the mid-1930s, many families left their homes, especially in the panhandle regions of Oklahoma and Texas. 3.5 million people were forced to flee the Great Plains for greener pastures. The responses immediately following were largely initiated by President FDR as he established several government programs under the Department of Agriculture such as the Soil Conservation Service which he hoped would relieve the disaster. One of the most extensive programs of these would be the Great Plains Shelter Belt constructed by the Conservation Corps planting 220 million trees across 18,000 square miles of land from Canada in the north down to the Brazos River in Texas. We may never see the public come together to solve a problem like this again. I mean, please forgive me if I'm being skeptical, but we can't even agree on inflation, whether or not we're in a recession, or whether the dollar is strong or weak. Even though the signs are clear to anyone who's looked at their grocery budget recently, nobody knows what to expect in the next few years. But this is a history channel. We know things like this tend to get worse before they get better. Right now we've got an energy crisis, an ongoing war overseas, inflation crushing the stock market, and even people thousands of miles away are feeling the side effects. Some retirees' 401k plans lost over 20% of their value in just one year. With these factors in mind, now could be a great time to consider re-evaluating your financial strategy. Even the world's largest financial managers agree, which is why they've been shifting some of their allocations ever since the pandemic from the traditional stock bond portfolio model to a heftier investment in alternative assets. And today's sponsor, Masterworks, is giving you an opportunity to invest in one of the most exclusive alternate asset classes one that had a record-setting year during last year's economic meltdown, fine art. This big year allowed Masterworks to pay out over $25 million in total net returns to their investors. In fact, every one of their exits to date has returned a profit to their investors. They even sold two more artworks in the middle of a bank run. Nearly 700,000 people have signed up so far, and with the markets on the verge of collapse, that number grows by the day, and so does their waitlist. But right now, my subscribers can get priority access to skip the line by clicking the link in the description. Sign up today to take advantage of this exclusive opportunity. Now, 
Back to the video. Following this, the Great Plains would become and remain a highly agriculturally productive region, comprising most of the United States domestic wheat production alongside cotton, corn, and livestock. These states would continue to see growth and development becoming economically productive with the states in the region also contributing heavily to the national economy as a whole today. This region, some have claimed, will become incredibly important in the coming years, similar to the Sun Belt in most projections, with a string of urban centers based around Denver along the edge of the Rockies projected to see the most growth. However, while the region may seem to be on track for growth, these hopes may be misplaced, as a new ecological disaster similar to the Dust Bowl may very well be coming. One of the most overlooked elements of the Great Plains, largely due to it being underground, is the Ogallala Aquifer, one of the world's largest aquifers stretching from South Dakota all the way down to Texas. This aquifer provides the region with much of its water used in agriculture, due to the Great Plains' semi-arid climate making rainwater an insufficient source for the level of agriculture currently practiced in the region. The influence of the Ogallala stretches beyond this as it also serves to supplement the water supply of several cities and key industries, especially in Texas where it helps to supplement water drawn by the San Antonio and Austin metro areas. But there is one problem with this aquifer. It recharges at an incredibly slow rate, a rate that is actually slow enough for it to be considered essentially non-renewable by most experts on the matter. This is because the Ogallala recharges only using the meager rainfall that the region receives, with most estimates saying that if the Ogallala were to be fully used, it would take 6,000 years to refill. What this means is that a significant portion of the U.S. agricultural industry is built on a non-renewable source of water that will be 70% depleted within the next 50 years, and this is already with some areas having to resort to drip irrigation, which is a form of irrigation primarily used in arid desert nations. While there are some solutions to this problem, such as improving desalinization to supplement the loss in water, or switching to less taxing methods of irrigation, this is unlikely given current sentiments around the issue. Because of this, it seems that the Ogallala being depleted is inevitable at this point. However, what would be the impact of this? Of course, as you might have guessed by this point, a new dust bowl. While the highly destructive agricultural techniques that allow the topsoil of the Great Plains to erode to the extent that they had are no longer in use, there still should be concern over the likelihood of dust storms. This is because in areas where farmers could no longer plant their crops due to a lack of water, the topsoil would begin to lose the root system developed by these crops, leading to a higher chance of small dust storms forming, albeit many decades down the line. Regardless of the size and extent of the dust storms, this issue will have cascading effects both in the United States and abroad. Economists anticipate that the world will lose $20 billion worth of food and plant-related products from this market, which could negatively affect net food importers from the United States. In addition to this, urban areas which draw or will need to draw from the Ogallala, such as Denver, Austin, and San Antonio, will find their local water systems under stress, as the growth and population expected in these areas would necessitate greater exploitation of water resources, which they simply do not have. Two of the most affected areas will be western and central Texas, where the industries and urban areas that use the Ogallala to supplement their water needs would now need to entirely rely on others such as the Edwards Aquifer, which also may be in danger of being rapidly depleted. This does not even account for the effects on the local towns and communities that would now be caught in this position, as the industry which they rely on, which is largely based upon agricultural products, would no longer have a local source to draw in the resources that they need. This would almost certainly lead to a migration from the Great Plains to more plentiful regions of the United States, which could have negative effects upon social stability, as seen by the reactions that Americans had even during the original Dust Bowl to the large import of domestic migrants. Now, of course, we have to ask ourselves, are there any solutions to this problem? As previously stated, reducing the amount of water taken in could be one that would slow the depletion of the aquifer, but this would only be a temporary solution. Another option would be to transition toward less agriculturally intensive crops as a preventative measure to allow the Ogallala to recharge slowly. Though once again this would simply be delaying the inevitable. The most radical but perhaps most lasting solution to this problem would be to create mass desalinization systems and reroute water from the Great Lakes by pipeline to the region affected by the drying of the aquifer in order to keep it agriculturally competitive. However, costs aside, many farmers from the Great Lakes strongly oppose this, seeing it as rightfully their water to use. Meanwhile, those populations dependent upon the Ogallala Aquifer do not see this threat as immediate enough to justify such hefty investment at this time. The issue will of course be that when the effects of this depletion are finally recognizable, it may be too late. But let me know what you think in the comments below. The US of Z, thanks for watching. Mr. Z, out.